It's time for Losses Above Replacement, the best baseball podcast to grace your ears, with your hosts, Alex. Gosh, I have so many questions. Also, where's my car? Splash. Strive to love something as much as my grandmother loves buying new crockpots. And Mac. If, if you've ever been to Boston, you know that they have amazing ice cream. Coming to you from coast to coast, it's L-A-R. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Losses Above Replacement, the best baseball podcast to grace your ears. I am today's host, Alex Clark, joined today by just one Ryan Splash Potts, no Matthias Altman-Kurosaki today. So, Splash, my main man, how are we doing today? Uh, I'm in awe out of the, I don't know, 70 episodes we have. You had to choose a Boston-related nugget for Mac. (laughs) <laughs> um I, I get the crock pot one because that's funny and the where's my car thing that was recent and funny but <laughs> choose it boiling mac down boiling a mets fan down to a boston reference is quite hilarious to me i i just find it funny the fact that a, a guy that's from new york here that now at least until we update the intro again that his line is about boston and praising boston i it's something about that i just I, I was tickled by. Yeah, it'd be like if you got a clip of me praising Skyline Chili. True. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Skyline fair is enough. the only good thing about Cincinnati, by the way. I had time to make an intro, by the way. I think it turned it turned out pretty good, though. Yeah, anyway. that's a check for me. Fair enough. Heck yeah. But other than that, how you doing, man? We're we are Mac-less today. Uh, the the uh, excuse me, game three of the playoffs here for the NLCS just concluded. And Mac, understandably, it's very late over there. Uh, it's a little too tired. Uh, for, so we're going to go ahead and record just us here. So how are you doing here as neither of our teams are in the playoffs? Uh, yeah, what are the playoffs? I don't know. I mean, I don't know either. I'm, I'm vibing. Um, it, just working a lot. And mm-hmm. I've been playing Lego Star Wars recently. Oh, nice. So- that's exciting. Uh, I would like to complete it all in under 24 hours. So I've been doing like little piece by little piece instead of, um, I guess like maybe 30 minute here, 30 minute there, instead of trying to play for like a couple hours and getting distracted and like, Oh, I'm going to go take a phone call or I'm going to go, you know, go to the bathroom or whatever. So, um, we're, we're going, we're through episode two. We're, uh, through, through the, uh, I've killed count Dooku. That's, that's the point where I am. (laughs) Also, Count Dooku, yeah. underrated Star Wars character. I mean, I respect it. Yeah, I mean, like, when I try to complete games... Uh, here's my question. Are you trying to 100% complete, or are you trying to just beat? Yes, 100% in under 24 hours. That's the goal. Okay. That, I respect it. That is, is a, a admirable goal. I do not yeah. know if I can complete the challenge. I know I can, <laughs> I've completed the game before, but I haven't... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a while since I've done, like, the blue mini kit things. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. We'll There's see. a number... Yeah. There's a number of games that I can complete. I just most of the time have no real desire to, mm. or like it's just way too much to try to complete it. Well, I would love to try and like complete like a Pokemon game mm. one time within like a one day period. I don't think mm. it's that likely. I mean, I've I've 100 percented both uh, Scarlet slash Violet and Legends Arceus mm. because kind of have to to in order to play some of the game but regardless yeah, i'm doing 100 percent of indiana jones oh heck yeah very nice yeah, very fun i i should do batman one of these days i've never finished batman i finished star wars i finished indiana jones i finished indiana jones 2 but i haven't finished batman I've had it for years hmm. never finished that's fair i've had i'm trying to think there was a I've been recently playing Mario Tennis for the GBA through the Switch. And hmm. we'll go one amazing, really fun game. But trying to complete it feels really slow because you still have to do six game sets as opposed to two game sets. Hmm. But it takes a while, but it's still fun. It's still I, really could, I could go for a nice tennis game. Like if tennis or golf had like a good game, like those old Tiger Woods games, I would mm. play those for hours. I uh, even I downloaded the recent one, I think on the PS. No, I got it on the my next gen console, and like it just is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Now I suck at the game, so I didn't <laughs> want to play it for very long. But it's just 
the vibes are immaculate. I'll tell you if you like honestly, one of my favorites of all time, uh, you can play it on your Wii, is Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. It's mm. still an amazing golf game to this day. May have to try like, it out. It, yeah, it's good. It doesn't have too much of the wacky stuff in it. Like it's still mm. fun, but it, like you don't have to worry about all these power ups and all that. You just mm -hmm. you're playing golf, you're having a good time. Mm. Perhaps I uh, should buy Mario Super Sluggers one of these days. Uh yes, absolutely. You should. It is a legendary game. Uh and tell us about uh Backyard Baseball for the Oh my gosh, Wii. thank you. Backyard Baseball 97 is amazing. <laughs> does, does it only have the kids or do you have MLBers in it? It's as only well? the kids. Uh, 97. Well, no, 97 only had the kids. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean so, I know, but I'm familiar with the games without well with MLB players. Yeah. Well, so they have announced that. 01 baseball is coming uh soon as well as 99 football and a few other ones mm. that do have pro players in them initially i'm curious to see if they are going to bring some of the pros back mm. or able to it's it's going to be a whole mess yeah the and, nil stuff yeah i will say this i have already uh gotten i think 80 percent of the achievements through mm. baseball, baseball 97 Jeez. No, I, I basically just bench played it for a few days and it was amazing. I uh, went through an entire season, took the, uh, what was it? The uh, Mighty All-Stars uh, all the way through the Super Tournament of the World and won. So I won that as well as done a few of the other fun uh, challenges such as get a splash home run. Did that, of course, at Legendary Steel Stadium. Mm. They also I have... did that at... Yep. Uh, Oracle Park. I was thinking AT and T Park because yeah, I was about to say it's, yeah. A candlestick. He <laughs> hit the home run candlestick. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> uh, he hit it at the Polo Grounds. <laughs> the opposite oh, side of the country. <laughs> um, but I also got the hit the homer into the trash can at Tin Can. Uh, in oh, it's not Tin Can Alley. It's a it's a I can't remember what it's called. The one I'm struggling with though right now is still trying to get the home run in Tin Can Alley without using a power up, because hmm. you're basically just surrounded by buildings. It is very tough to do. Um, so I've been kind of grinding on that, but I've got ever I've got almost every other. The only other achievements besides that one are just the play the game a lot achievements like get a bunch of home runs get a bunch of strikeouts get a bunch mm -hmm. of grand slams mm -hmm. so i think uh, we've had this this conversation before but if i were the like czar of college football <clears throat> and made the video game i would have so many achievements i would have like you could is you're you're a washington guy or well yeah. washington the state not washington <laughs> the football team uh right. so if you won the apple cup um you get trophies for it so you get like yep, a I'm bronze, apple cup, that, yeah. silver if you win it five times gold if you win it 10 times so on and so forth and i could imagine myself with like platinum apple cup platinum all the big 10 stuff like the old big 10 like minnesota big 10 not like the new big 10 like mm -hmm. the cyhawk trophy have like 10 of the just art upon art and you could play that game for hours play it like learn about all these new rivalries that's i would be that would be my focus i know the the new game has a lot of people that like it and you have the recruiting stuff and the nil and road to glory but you know the simple things like that always yeah tickle my fancy same here 100 percent um i do want to say one thing before we get started though back on backyard baseball thank you so so much here to mega cat studios and playground productions amazing getting to bring this back and also just a little this is a little hint on it i i just want to say thank you to you guys as well the little shout out at the very end during at the very end of the credits here to humongous entertainment here for all that they couldn't use the likeness in the game at all but giving the little shout out at the end being like yeah it started with you so thank you was absolutely wow absolutely amazing so with that being said it's time to talk about baseball in our realm here yes. our realm of the living are, wait whoa, whoa, whoa. are we sure backyard baseball is not real yes darn unfortunately okay, okay. i mean uh, i'd rather watch that than the playoffs right now but, i mean okay. same but i mean hey if you want to i could stream backyard baseball for you i mean oh. shoot that'd be great for content That'd actually be really good for content. I might end up 
Okay, you know what? That you make a fair point. I may end up having to do that pretty soon. I look, I <laughs> had the whole jank stream with my phone and the Wii and the TV. I've done a couple of those. You have and baseball I can is much easier. Right. It is much, much easier. Yes. I'm looking at my phone because I'm trying to find uh I sent a picture of the longest home run that I've ever hit. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ahmed Khan, no power up. No power up. Hit a 621 foot home run. Okay, Mickey Mantle. I, I don't know how that happened. I must have hit it like not just perfect, perfect, but perfect, 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 perfect. Into a jet stream, maybe? Into a jet stream. You know, possibly. It's during the playoffs, too. So, mm. hey, clutch Ahmed Khan. Speaking about the playoffs. Playoffs have been underway for a good while now. We are now in the championship series in both the American League side and the National League side. Here on the American League side, you have the Cleveland Guardians taking on the New York Yankees. On the National League side, you have the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the New York Metropolitans. So before we get to that, those series, let's talk a little bit about what led up into this. The last time that we had our podcast here, the only team that we knew for sure that was going to be in the playoffs, here, remind me, which team was it? Uh, we knew the Mets would be advancing because they had just beaten the Falus for yes. in four games. Yes, we, it was the Mets at that point. So we still have a few other series that we need to talk about, at least just a little bit. This is not going to be a three words only, but if we just keep it fairly might simple. Might as well be. Just, do you, hey, do you want to make an impromptu? Yeah, let's three make it three words only. only. Heck on yeah. Spot. Great podcasting on, right here, right now. Call on the spot. Let's go, boys. All right, let's start yeah. it off then in the American League side with Royals v. Yankees here. And I'll go first. On this one, so I can give you some time to think of three words for this. Sure. Uh, uh, my three words are magic ran out. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, this one, the Royals as well as the Tigers were like the two big Cinderella stories coming into this postseason on the American League side. And after taking down the Orioles, people thought, okay, you know what? Maybe the magic of Will Smith is actually true. I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe oh, it's actually no. true. He lost a playoff series. He did lose a playoff series, unfortunately. But they just went up against the juggernaut. It just, it, it wasn't, like in po like I'm wearing a Pokemon shirt here. The fairy type, the magical type gets dominated by the steel type. Like, it just didn't work out for them. And it didn't even feel that good. Like, it was, a th uh, it was three games to one. So... The Yankees proved their dominance here and became a team that right now are looking to be almost locks for the World Series. Mm -hmm. uh, my three words are evil empire expands. They're back. Mm -hmm. They're better than ever. They have multiple Hall of Famers, including number 27. And, you know, they just survive in advance. Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon. You have the... Uh, the Stanton, as I mentioned, Judge, Soto, Wells, Anthony Rizzo. He's back for the ALC ALCS. Glaber, you know, they're just all they're just all vibing, you know. And they are taking care of business now against Cleveland. But the, the Kansas City series, you knew they were the better team. They went in, they took care of business. And it's a cliche, but you have to win to advance in the playoffs. And they did. They took care of business. You know, they saw the Royals on the schedule and they took care of business. So... Just evil empire activities. There are the the yeah, yes, you gotta you play to win the game. Yes. All right, let's move on to our next series. Then we're gonna talk about the Tigers versus the Guardians. Um, and I'm gonna start off on this one, and I hate the three words that I have for this mm. are mid off Victor. Oof. Like, I I feel bad about it, but really, when you look at these teams. There's not a whole lot that really impresses me. Like, when it comes to the Tigers, I, I, I personally think they were the better team. But that's honestly just because the Tariq Skubal leading a pitching staff, as we've seen in the wild card round, can beat the Astros. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, like, honestly, it went to five games because it was... It, again, these were fairly e equal in their skill level, and it came down to one game. Look at the scores. Cleveland dominated game one. Detroit got, dominated game two. Detroit dominated game three. Then it was a close game for game four, and then Cleveland dominated game five. Like, there was one game in this entire series that had 
less than a three run differential between the two teams. Mm-hmm. Like it was just these two teams going back and forth, like almost like you, how you're watching a wrestling match here when the two that are absolutely exhausted are just taking shot at each other, just trying to get any sort of momentum. And then, you know, Cleveland continued on. Yeah. So my three words are, are they good? And this applies to both of these teams. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the guardians are good at baseball. I don't know if the tigers are good at baseball. And I don't mean that as a shot against the guardians or mm-hmm. the tigers. Um, I just, if you boil down the teams to a couple main attributes, hitting, pitching, bullpen, both teams have really good bullpens. Okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Cleveland does not have a pitching staff. They are running on fumes even now. It is game three of the ALCS. Your series, your season, in fact, is on the line or will be on the line very soon. And you're not exactly confident in who you're throwing out there for game three of a playoff series or even game two. Alex Cobb started game one. Yes, Alex Cobb, a midseason acquisition who I don't even know if he's a good pitcher. This is a far fall from from the teams that had Klubot and uh, a man who is now pitching in Mexico and <laughs> Clevenger and other like good pitchers. Like this mm-hmm. was a team that when I was a kid, they had Cliff Lee and CC Sabathia. Like you got horses. Now it's like, where are you? They're all in the bullpen. Actually, that's the answer. Mm-hmm. And the lineup, you have Jose Ramirez. That's great. Andres Menes, horrendous season. Josh Naylor, good. His brother, not as good. John Kenzie Noel has some struggle bus moments, right? And it's, a lot the same goes for the Tigers. Like, Kerry Carpenter was dealing with an injury. He had the big homer off Class A, which was three out of the four earned runs Class A allowed in the series, by the way. He allowed five all regular season. You have Carpenter. You have Riley Green. Maybe you get something out of Cole Keith. Maybe you get something out of Torkelson. But it's just a lot of you're plugging and playing. And they were setting records for most players used in a game when you have <clears throat> all these bullpen changes and all these pinch hitters and pinch runners and defensive substitutions and Flip flop, flip flop. Imagine that was a National League game. Oh my goodness! the The lineup cards would be like, it would be ancient they'd be novels. Yeah, yeah, they'd be novels. It's just, I don't. I know it's playoff baseball. I get it, and I respect Cleveland for winning the series. They come back. They they tack mm-hmm. on all the runs against Scooble Lane Thomas with the swing of his life. Just, I don't know if they're a good baseball team. Either of them. I think that they're decent. Uh-huh. Like I don't. I just think that they have very obvious flaws. That right now the Yankees are fully exposing from Cleveland here, and like you said, they both wasted everything they could during just to move on to the CS here, uh-huh. and now you're seeing what happens when you're playing on fumes. But I still want like Cleveland to do well because one, it makes for more baseball, but uh-huh. two, I also just again. Kyle Manzardo is my boy, so I always, I'll always be rooting for. Okay, Manzardo with all due respect here. to Kyle Manzardo, is he exactly the hitter you want hitting second in your lineup in a playoff yes. game? Yeah, he should be hitting first and second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth. <laughs> okay, no, I, he's just he's my boy. So I no, I know exactly. I know exactly. I know, look, I agree with you. I'm just being fun with it. <laughs> yes, like I, I don't know. It just feels off. Me. Give him some time to like, no, give no, him no, no. Like, that's not the problem. It's just oh, I know. Like even if okay, let's say it's not Mansardo. Outside of Jose Ramirez, who in the Cleveland lineup scares you out of the two hole? Like okay, Jose Ramirez, great. He's gonna yeah. hit wherever. He's gonna scare you. Great. Josh Naylor is a good hitter. Okay, yeah, fine. He, he's like a number three. Yeah, he's not number a number guy. two type hitter. He's your cleanup no. bat, really. And yeah, it's like Quan is. Like a fine Juan's hitter. A lead off. He's a leadoff yeah. guy. Yeah, like we had the conversation. Luis Arise, by the way. We'll, we'll get to oh, the yeah. Padres here in a minute. We'll get to the Padres. Soon. We'll get to the Padres. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if either of these teams are good at baseball. That's the problem. Yeah. Like both teams, like again, they have good pieces, but one mm-hmm. thing that I think that's going to be really awesome good to bullpens. See. I can't stress that yeah. enough. Spectacular bullpens. But one thing that's going to be really good to see from them is that. I think the next next year the American League Central is going to be extremely competitive mm-hmm. because these teams that have not we had three teams make the playoffs 
here mm-hmm. from this division. So and it, they're pro- frankly, they might be the second, third, and fourth most talented teams in the division with how exactly so that's what's even funnier about it. Um, yeah, thank you, playoff uh system. But uh <laughs> they're the now nice when you get well. the when you get the taste of the playoffs here and you see how far you're able to get, then you start getting that itch to make some moves to get better and to keep mm-hmm. getting better. So I have a feeling the American League Central next year could be really scary. Mm-hmm. Aside way, from the White Sox. That is the first time the Royals have lost a series in the American League playoffs since 1981. Holy gay. I, I want I, I need to fact check that. I believe that's ans- the answer, but they won the World Series and they went to the World Series in 14, 15, and 85. And I think they went to the World Series in 82, lost to the Phillies. Or not not the Phillies. Uh yeah, okay, my bad. It was 1984. They lost the World Series in 1982 to the Phillies, but 1984 is the last time the Royals were eliminated in the American League playoffs. The Man. previous three times they'd gone to the World Series. Yep. So yeah, one, one of them at least. So yeah. they did win uh, the World Series. They did. All right. Moving on here to 85 and 15. Yeah. Um, Moving on here to the last divisional series that we're going to talk about here, and that is on the National League side here, the Dodgers versus the Padres. I have a feeling you would like to go first on this one. Uh, Can I have a clarification? If I say a number, is that one word, just a number? That's that's one word, yeah. Okay, even if it's like multiple, like if it's one Yeah, because usually they're hyphenated, so you're fine. Uh, My three words are 24 scoreless innings. Let me stress this. Let me. I'm going to get real close. San Diego Padres took a lead six to five against the Los Angeles Dodgers in Game Three. They did not score the rest of the series. That was um, seven innings. Or, sorry, six innings. The rest of Game Three, nine innings in Game Four, and nine innings in Game Five. And the 24 most important innings of your season, with 18 giving you a do or die chance to just advance to the next round and beat your hated rival Dodgers, including nine at Petco park. You scored zero runs in 24 consecutive innings. This is a team that employs Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado, Luis Arise. Oh, I'm going to emphasize Luis Arise, the batting champion who everyone praises as the batting champion. Jerks and Profar will receive MVP votes this season. Jackson Merrill will receive MVP votes this season. Kyle Higashioka hit a bunch of home runs this season. Sander Bogarts, former world series champion. Jake Cronenworth had a pretty solid season. Did I mention Luis Arise? I mentioned Luis Arise again. Uh, Luis Arise, uh, the last five seasons, has zero extra base hits in the playoffs. And you're like, oh, he's uh, just a single sitter. Yeah, that would be one thing. If he was just a single sitter and was actually hitting a decent... He's hitting like 230. If you're like, well, the 230. Aaron Judge hits 210, and he gets like actively pants by the media for hitting 210 in the playoffs. Well, Luis Arise, world-renowned contact hitter, has the three batting champions, is compared to Tony Gwynn every five minutes, has a like a 232 batting average in the playoffs in the last five seasons, and zero extra base hits and two walks. He is not driving in runs. He has four RBI in his last 47, uh, f- sorry, four runs scored in his last 47 plate appearances and has zero RBI in this span. You can point out, well, he's a leadoff type. Then he should be scoring runs. He doesn't score runs. He gets on first 23% of the time and does jack squat else. He is not a good defensive player. He is not a good base runner. He provides no power. He's there's He has one tool, and when he's not doing that tool, he is not a good baseball player. He had no multi-hit games against the Dodgers. This is Luis Arise, 200 hits in a season, three uh, three batting titles. I know it's uh, is it no, it's not his fault. Like you have other pieces around him, but like when you tell me, oh, Luis Arise is the exact bat you want in the playoffs. No, he's not. Yeah, no, I I completely understand you on that point. Like it's it, the playoffs are an entirely different beast. Again, you have players that only show up during the playoffs, and you have players. Uh, Kike that... Hernandez says hello. Yeah, Kike Hernandez <laughs> says hello. He might say hello again a little bit later. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That's true. Um. Anyway, my three words for this are foot on gas, and those come. It's very similar to what you were talking about here. After that last run was scored from San Diego, the Dodgers basically said. All right, it's go time. And proceeded to dominate. Completely dominate on a hitting side, on a pitching side. Every side, the Dodgers 
showed why they are in the playoffs here. Don't get me wrong. I think that the Padres are one of the most talented teams in all of baseball. The Dodgers are good. They are scary good. And when they go on these runs where they know how, where they're able to piece everything they have together, this is a dang near perfect baseball team. Like starting pitching wise, yeah, you still have question marks because of the injuries, but that's because of injuries. You have this team at full power. When you have this team here, imagine next year, right? Mm -hmm. Next year, when you have Otani also pitching right alongside uh, uh, Yashinobu Yamamoto. Oh my gosh. This team. And they're going to get get Roki Sasaki and (laughs) Corbin Burns. And they're going to get Blake Snell. And they're going to sign Juan Soto. (laughs) Alonzo. I don't know where Freddie's going to play, but they're going to sign everyone. Uh, did Fred, uh, Freddie they're gonna move into third base? <laughs> That's true. World famous third baseman Freddie Freeman. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, they can sign Travis Darno to play second. <laughs> no, they're just gonna bring Jorge Posada out of retirement. To play second. That's a good point. Or they can just play Mookie there. Just yeah, you know, I I don't know. I don't think it worked out too well. That's uh, true. <laughs> fair enough. Anyway, but yeah, this team when it plays at the level that we saw during this twenty plus inning stretch. Which, by the, by the way, they continued this stretch into the CS. Mm-hmm. Dude, this wasn't just the Padres. This was also against the Mets, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. Here, this team, when all the cylinders are firing, ha- good luck is all you is really all you can say. Good luck. Mm-hmm. That's all you got. It's a really excellent team. They have like two full rotations worth of starters on the IL the bullpen showed up when it needed to mm-hmm. and they got just enough timely hitting to vanquish the Padres and I, I will point out the Padres a blow up start from Dylan Cease in game four and then Darvish gave them a really good start in game five um, mm-hmm. I mentioned it on the last last podcast that I didn't didn't exactly trust Darvish in that spot in an elimination game at Dodger Stadium but hey he held up his end of the bill the bullpen for the most part held up their end of the bill it's just the hitting. You can't win games, Sean Murphy said. You can't win games if you score zero runs. True. Words to live by right there. And it, you, can, you can't you can lose games if you allow zero runs, which is important. Also, just having you, Darvish, versus Yamamoto uh, start against each other in the playoffs was truly cinema. Chills. It was awesome. Chills. Yeah. First time ever that two Japanese-born players started against each other in a playoff game, I believe. I wonder An MLB yeah, playoff game. Yes, that's true. I wonder if that was the first time two non-American players from the same country played. I don't think game. Probably don't not. Think so. That would just be my guess. Probably not. That, that would be another Jason Stark uh, <laughs> trivia yeah. question. That would, Yeah, that would be a good one. Um, all right, let's move on then to the CSs for both sides. And we've kind of already touched a bit on Guardians versus uh Yankees, but let's talk about it anyway here a bit because there's still more to figure out with this. Currently, at the time of this recording here, New York leads the Guardians uh two games to zero here, and both games not astoundingly close three run games here, both for New York on the head. Here and uh, kind of like what you were saying earlier, the Guardians just feel like they're running on fumes. Mm-hmm. They don't look like they're playing at their full potential, and they have to be in order to have any chance here against the the Bronx Bombers. Yeah, this is just a this is just a talent gap to me. This yeah. this is a situation where you go back ten years with the the playoff format not as diluted, and frankly. The Yankees, I think, are comparable to the teams you'd see 10 years ago. Ironically enough, 10 years ago was the the Giants year. That was a really weak season. But regardless, you go back, and I can look at this Yankees team and say, okay, they have a star here, they have a star here, they have you know all-star level players here, here, here. And you look at the Guardians, and it's like this team, it just feels like an 85-win team. I know they won more than 85 games, and they had yeah. the power surge early on in the season, and David Fry was an all-star. I understand that. But – you only can get so much out of the platoon stuff. At some point, you have to have good baseball players and like good hitters. You can you can have plenty of good baseball players. I'm not disputing like Stephen Kwan's a great outfielder. David Fry can play everywhere. Um, Jimenez is a terrific defensive second baseman, etc. But like the Yankees have 
Judge and Soto and Stanton and Jazz and Glaber. And I mean, Rizzo is more of a name than a bat at this point, but you at least have Anthony Rizzo. Like Like it's Anthony Rizzo. Um, And Volpe is a gold glove defender. And it's just like, that feels like a real team. And then you have Garrett Cole and Carlos Rodon. And I mean, Clay Holmes is kind of shaky, but Clay Holmes, you know, he got some key outs and it's like, that feels like a real team. That feels like a team that, in 25 years, when the if the Yankees win the World Series and they have their old timers day, you can like, yeah, you know, Garrett Cole, Cy Young Award winner, you know, Giancarlo Stanton's in the Hall of Fame, Aaron Judge, a couple MVPs, Juan Soto, you know, 1,500 walks, 3,000 hits, whatever. <laughs> like, it feels like sometimes you can tell the story when it's happening, and sometimes, like, sometimes you have a shocking story, sometimes you have upsets, but a lot of times you can see. You can see the pieces fall into place. You can see, yeah, Aaron Judge is uh, going to win a World Series at some point, or Juan Soto is going to win another World Series, or Garrett Cole is going to have these moments. And the Guardians, it's like, outside of Jose Ramirez, do you trust these guys in these moments? Do you Can you see David Fry holding a World Series trophy? I made the point with the Marlins when they traded Luis Arise. Can you see Luis Arise holding the World Series trophy for the Marlins? No. And <laughs> bringing it full circle, you go to Cleveland, it's like, Jose Ramirez, yes. The rest of the team, I don't think so. Maybe Emmanuel Clase, mm-hmm. that works, but I, I don't know. I don't. I don't see. I can see Jazz holding a World Series trophy. My thing right now is that, like, I made the the uh, connection last week of the uh, Detroit Tigers are feel like the scrappy underdogs of like a sports anime. So I feel that it you have all these underdogs that. If they can mesh together, they should be fine. But you just have all these pieces here. The Guardians are very similar. But this feels like, again, if this is the anime, this is the point where the Tigers are in the stands watching the Guardians get whooped because the Guardians spent everything they could to beat the Tigers. Mm -hmm. And now the Yankees are just there to pick up the scraps. The other thing I kind of want to bring up when it comes to this is if you take a look at the bracket for the postseason – this looked like about as easy of a path for the Yankees to make the World Series as you could possibly get. Yeah. Like, you take a look at what they had. They had a buy first, which, okay, you know, that's fine. But the winning team, it's like the winner of the wild card that you would end up facing is either the Kansas City Royals, who, again, we've talked about having talent issues potentially, mm-hmm. and the Orioles, who who you had played a lot over the season. This was a rival that you knew. Mm-hmm. And you felt like either one you could have taken, you probably would have taken your, more of your chances with the Royals than the mm-hmm. Orioles here. And then guess what you got? You got the Royals. So now you take the uh, Royals and you win that series. If you take a look at the other side of the bracket here, as much as I hate to say it, the, the best team on that side of the bracket is Houston. And Houston did not make it out of the wild card round because the Tigers were the anime protagonists in this time. And unfortunately, then the, the Protags did not make it to the ALCS as they were taken down by the Guardians. But because of that, that now means that as soon as the Astros were eliminated, that the Yan- whoever, there's going to be at least one team in the ALCS that was from the AL Central. Mm-hmm. and as we've talked about before, like, yes, three teams made it to the playoffs. Doesn't mean that they're the best three teams. Mm-hmm. You could argue yeah. they're the worst three teams. You really I know they could. did eliminate the two of the Don Yankee teams. I know that, mm-hmm. but you could argue yeah. over 162 games, they were not the yeah. best. Yes, they were we can four, make five that. and six. I know Cleveland finished with the better yeah. record than Houston. I, that's uh, not yeah. the point. But, that's not the point. Or maybe. Yeah, and I, yeah. it's not even... This to me is not a Yankees point. This is a around the league point. I think the Yankees mm-hmm. are a perfectly fine World Series winner. I just said a minute ago they have enough talent that I'm yeah, I could absolutely see the Yankees winning the World Series. If you if you gave me like 12 random playoff teams of all time and 11 plus this year's Yankees and you said, "Yeah, the Yankees actually win this." I yeah, I could see it. I could see mm-hmm. it. If the you said the Guardians win, it, I'm like, mm, mm, that's that I would be interested in watching watching how exactly. they won. I'd watch it, yeah. Yeah, it's like Texas last year. Like, you could talk me into it. Like, this is a loaded team talent-wise. You have Garcia and 
uh, Seager and at what Evan Carter was last year, at least not, not so much this year. And Lowe was a silver slugger level player and Heim had a great season and semi. It's like, mm-hmm. where's the star power. It's like, mm-hmm. oops, all mid. You hate to see it, but yeah, you're, you're, you're accurate on this, but again, that kind of goes to what we're seeing here from the Yankees here is that every, you take a look at the postseason picture right now, almost every team in the national league, here on the National League side of the bracket here, feels like it's better than every team on that half of the American League bracket. Mm-hmm. I'll talk about the one that included the uh, Tigers, Guardians, and Astros. Mm-hmm. And it really just felt like, at that point, that the winner wouldn't be from that side unless something amazing happened, which, again, we've seen happen. Mm-hmm. We have seen amazing happen, ev- like, Countless times in baseball. They the Diamondbacks did make the World Series last the year. The Diamondbacks they, did make the World Series. I got to see Paul Seawald pitch in a World Series game, and I was very happy about it. At least until he allowed. At least until run. that happened. Yes. Different story though. Anyway, <laughs> at least it the Astros for you, right? <sighs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. At least yeah. So the exactly. Honestly, last year's World Series was fun. Just because we didn't have any of the teams that had been in the World Series for the last several years. It was just fun. Like, don't get me wrong. I still hated seeing an AL West team win. Was mm-hmm. I win it when that team was not the Seattle Mariners? Yeah, but, but I will say we're kind of used to that finale. Yeah. Which one? The Mariners not making the World Series? <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I'm like, say yes. The one. We're yeah. very used that's to that. That's the one. That's the one. That's the uh, oh. the one that, um, yeah. But then again, I, I will point out that winning the World Series is the like 100th percentile outcome. Mm-hmm. In that, like, having a good season is not. It's not enough. Yeah. Well, having a good season is not enough. Having a good season is not worth throwing like burning it all to the ground, either. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, let's move on to the best. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the best team since like June first, and that's the New York Mets. True. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about the Mets here as the Mets taking on the Dodgers here in the NLCS. And currently at this moment, the Dodgers lead the Mets two games to one. And I think I'm going to bring up something fun from our text. Oh God. Here, don't worry. Nothing. Nothing cancelable. But I find it honestly hilarious that uh, back multiple times now it's gone like we're so back or I hate the Dodgers <laughs> series is over. Uh, <laughs> and yes. like, look, I understand, like, you know, especially when you're in this kind of dilemma here, it feels weird to take a loss to the Dodgers when, as you know, you're the underdogs here. Like mm-hmm. that's not, that's, that's not a question at this point. Mm-hmm. So it feels like every loss is the end of the world because it's another opportunity that's gone away. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're the Dodgers, you're just trying to stave them off. Mm-hmm. Like you're just trying it's to hold to off. That's all what it is. That's all it is. It's a race to four. It is a race to four. And right now, like, here's the thing. Like it's not a one game left to elimination tied for either side. Here, the Dodgers lead by one game. And so I honestly still think this series could go either way mm-hmm. here. But um, tell me a little bit about what you're seeing. You've had a little bit more of a vested interest in this National League uh, side of the playoff brackets. Sure. Not necessarily in the best way. No, in a very toxic way. <laughs> um, So let's talk game one. Uh, the Dodgers did not allow a run. Uh, like Alex left the cliffhanger, 33 consecutive innings. The Dodgers did not allow a run. Notice. Did not go to 34 because Francisco Lindor hit a leadoff home run in game two. The Mets jumped all over the Dodgers. Fientos hit a grand slam. Um, had a funny sound bite when they walked uh, they, they walked uh, Lindor to get to Vientos. It's like, why are you walking that guy? And he hits the grand slam. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a just tumult there at Dodger Stadium. And then today, the Dodgers go in and take care of business in Queens. So Tani hits his home run. Max Muncy gets on the board with the homer. Kike Hernandez hits another home run. What a time to be alive. And it's just, it's just been a good series. I, I think it's been a pretty good series so far. You have a lot of key moments for both teams. Um, and I think, like you said, it's um, a race to four. I said it was a race to four, but you said the series isn't over yet. I, yeah, I think the Mets can come back and win the series. They do need to probably win two of the next three. Uh, 
Well, actually, they definitely need to win two of the next three because if they lost two of the next three, the Dodgers would get to four. <laughs> there games. you go. We got the math, boys. <laughs> we got the math. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, take one of the next two in Queens uh, and then you live to fight another day and you try to win game six at Dodger Stadium, win game seven at Dodger Stadium and hope you get Edwin Diaz closing it out at the end. So I would, to be fair, I would absolutely pop off seeing Edwin Diaz try to close out a game of the World Series. Like, Unfortunately, me, that... he cannot close out the series in Queens here, Yeah, uh, at least in the NLCS, but potentially the World mm-hmm. Series, if they were to win in... F- uh, I don't recall how many wins they had in relation to... Well, they had fewer than the Yankees. I don't remember how many they had in relation to the Guardians. I, I would imagine fewer than the Guardians. So it would have to be it would have to be game four or game five, which it seems unlikely they'd beat the Yankees yeah. or Guardians... 4-0 or 4-1, but regardless, point stance. Imagine how electric it would be if Edwin Diaz comes out of the mound on Yankee Stadium Game 7 to close out the World Series, bottom of the ninth, and he has to face like Judge Soto Stanton. I want that. that I want that so, so desperately. And then our king, future Hall of Famer, John Carlos Stanton, taking him 500 feet. No. Yes. <laughs> no, I want to see. No, I want to No, I'll tell you exactly what. I would want to see on that one. And again, I know I'm not a Yankee fan, so I want to see it as uh, he gets judge to, uh, to do a pop out to the outfield. He strikes out judge and Stanton. It, it's a high towering pop up into the outfield. Call. Yeah, exactly. It's like towering pop up to the outfield and robbing a home run in the outfield there yeah. would be the greatest ending just to watch the Yankee fans be so sour. That would be, Oh man. That's okay. Crazy. I also had this horrible thought. This is something that should never enter the universe, okay. but how messed up funny would it be if there was a glitch at the stadium at Yankee stadium and they brought out Edwin Diaz and enter Sandman started playing on accident. <laughs> Like I just had that brain image in my head, and now I I am like absolutely. Yeah, that's how it would go in like a video idea. game or a video game or a movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, it'd be definitely in a movie. It'd be like in a sitcom. I uh, think it sounds. Like. Yeah, it would be uh, Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying yeah, it'd be Seinfeld. <laughs> uh, be like, it's like, hey Jerry, I just went into the video room, Jerry. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, with that. Uh, World Series predictions, sir. Yeah. Uh, my World Series prediction originally was Astros Phillies. Thankfully, that went in the dumpster. Uh, and then the last round, are heading into the LCS. I don't think we made official prediction. I guess I would have picked Yankees Mets. Um, but I, I think I'm okay with staying Yankees Mets. Mm-hmm. I would like, or I would not like if the Mets won the next game. But for the sake of the prediction, it would be nice if they won the next game. Cause I don't know if they can beat the Dodgers three times in a row. Um, but it, this is okay, great for the Dodgers. They take the two, one lead. You know, you win the fir- two out of the first three, you win the series like 65% of the time. Mm-hmm. And the Yankees have, have put themselves up to nothing. They just got to win two more. Take either take one in Cleveland or you got a stressed out crowd in game six and game seven at Yankee stadium. Yeah. It's, <sighs> I don't remember what my prediction was last week. I think it was Yankees Dodgers. I want to say uh, I took the no the no fun route, mm. um, and I think I'm gonna have to stick with it. Okay. Like I think that I I like the Mets and I want the Mets to do well. If anything, just so the MLB burns, uh, because they posted a uh, ad for the postseason uh, that was just Yankees and Mets. <sighs> I uh, said, so, sorry, just Yankees and Dodgers, excuse me. Ah, Where it was yeah. just Judge versus Otani. And I'm like, you do remember there's two other teams in the playoffs there, right, MLB? Oh, yeah. hey, those are the MVPs this year. Yeah. There, it was a, not an ad for the MVPs. It was an ad for the playoffs. That's an I understand. Okay. But those are, like, those are number one and number two marketable players in baseball. Oh, I'm aware. Yeah. I'm not saying they're not. I'm <laughs> saying that if you're going to make an ad for it. It should have been Miguel Rojas sure- and Jazz Chisholm. <laughs> no, they should have had the ad be. Yeah, uh, it really should have no, been. No, they, they needed it to be uh, Class A versus Diaz. <laughs> I, that, I mean, yeah. Hey, and then they're both too. walking home. One of them has a taser. One of them doesn't have a taser. <laughs> <laughs> no, one has a trumpet. Um, 
Anyway, anyway, okay. Anyway, uh, before we're, we get you're off the rails, uh, it might be trivia time there, pal. I th- I think so. But first, before we get to trivia here, let us know what you guys think on oh. Twitter at lar underscore baseball. Here, let us know what is your World Series prediction. What do you guys think about how the playoffs have gone so far? Do you think that the Mets are going to pull off a miracle run here? Do you think the Guardians are going to pull off a miracle run? Go ahead and let us know on Twitter at LAR underscore baseball and on Instagram at the same handle. But it is now trivia time. And trivia always works a little bit differently when it, there's just two of us here because mm-hmm. we can't have two people going at it on this one. So I have, instead of just normal trivia, I have a challenge okay. for Splash here. I put together a list here that I have found. And, you know, we were talking about Kike Hernandez. A little bit mm-hmm. here. He's been doing pretty darn well. In fact, oh. what is it? He has what 14 postseason home runs in his career now. I want to say Wait. 15 now, right? Uh, I think it's still just uh, he today. Be four- yeah, okay. Then he's at 15. Minutes. Okay, 15. okay. Then yeah, he's at 15. So okay. he is tied for 19th oh. most postseason home runs. I was just looking at this list. Career. Shout out to Sean Stanton. Uh, we'll who's get not on the list, work. but he's not on yeah. the list yet. <laughs> so what I want you to try and do is name as many players that in their career have had more postseason or the same amount of postseason home runs as one Kike Hernandez. So I'm going right. for 15 plus, correct? 15 or more. And like I said, there are 19. All right. Let's, let's fire off some easy ones. Manny Ramirez has the most. Man- Okay, yeah, Manny Ramirez, number one at 29. Jose Altuve, your man, is second. Yes, he is, 27. All right, Bernie Williams is at, I think, 20. Uh, he's at 22, but okay. yes, number three. Uh, okay, we are going to go with Babe Ruth. He's at 15. Babe Ruth is, yeah, tied at 15. Okay, uh, Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle is at 18, yes. Uh, Reggie Jackson. Also at 18. Okay. Uh, Oh, my. I had a total brain freeze. Okay. Uh, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter is on the list. Number five at 20. Okay. Okay. Now got to buckle down. So we have one, two, three, and five. Yeah, you so far have named one, two, uh, three, five, uh, 12, 13, and 19. Okay. Uh, Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey, yep, is number 16 with 17 homers. Uh, I believe Miguel Cabrera is on the list. If he's not on the list, he's at 14, which would be really sad. Miguel Cabrera is 13, maybe. not on okay. the list. Okay. I don't have the number here. My number only goes down to the top 25. Okay, because I think he's at 13. Yeah, if he is, then he'd be tied. um, He'd be tied then for another number, yeah. Yeah, he'd be tied with Stanton. Okay. Um, Okay. So that's your first. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. David Ortiz is at 15 with 17 homers. Okay. Uh, Alex Bregman. Alex Bregman is on the list. Number six at 19 wow. homers. That's crazy. Uh, Corey Seager. <laughs> Corey Seager tied with Bregman at 19. Uh, okay. Hmm. At a certain point, it's just who played in enough playoff games. Exactly. Like I was surprised at this list, uh, like how many people played in this many playoff games. Uh, Carlos Beltran, I know, is ahead of Stanton on the regular season list. He's I'm gonna say Carlos Beltran. Beltran is correct. He has okay. 16. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. So is that number 17? Uh, so how many do we have right now? Yeah, so far you still have one, two, three, five, six. Uh, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, and 19. So you're still right. missing a good few. All right. Uh, Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber is the biggest one that you haven't gotten so far. He's number four, 21. All right. Uh, Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz is on the board at 18 
homers. Okay. 11 on the list. All right, let's knock out a couple Astros. Uh, Carlos Correa. <laughs> Carlos Correa, number 10 on the list, 18. Okay, George Springer. George Springer on the list, number 8 at 19. Okay. Uh, ooh, okay. Um, uh, Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones is not on the list. He's a he's a close like thirteen or fourteen. Uh, okay, Albert Pujols. I can tell you right now, he does not have fourteen. Okay, he'd be at thirteen then. Albert Pujols. Oh. Albert Pujols is on the list, number nine, with nineteen homers. Oh lord. Okay, so I'm missing. Like so far, right nine. now, you have not said number seven. I believe you have not said number fourteen. Or number 18. So, or number uh, 20. Oh, sorry. Never mind. You don't need 20. Never mind. Okay. That's a different number. Uh, okay. So you're, you're doing really well. I got yeah. So that. there's Yankees teams, Red Sox teams. I don't think any Giants would have been on the list besides Beltron. Um, I don't even know. He didn't homer for them. That's true. Did, did Beltron even play with the Giants? Oh, I'm thinking of. Okay, whatever. Uh, Still have two strikes to work with. Uh, I, no, I only have the one strike. I have one strike left. Oh, I th oh yeah, you have one strike. <clears> left. Yeah, I had two for Jones. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, said Bernie got Altuve, Bregman, mm -hmm. Correa, Springer. Mm -hmm. uh, Miguel Cabrera is short. Chipper was the other you, short one. Do you want some hints? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, so you have a total right now of, I believe, let's see here. One, two. Oh, yeah. You only have three left, I believe. The list. Mm -hmm. You've done really okay. well. Okay. Um, three two left. of them. Are active players. One ah, is not. wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, I know Aaron Judge is close. I don't want to say Aaron Judge, but he's. Okay. I know he has at least thirteen. I think he might be at okay. four. Are we looking for guys with fifteen or guys with fourteen? Guys, guys with, 15. with fifteen. Okay. I think yeah, Judge is at more. fourteen, so I'm not going to say Judge. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if Barry had enough home runs outside of 2002 to be on the list. Garcia doesn't because he had a bunch last year. Rosa Reina, I don't think he's played enough playoff games outside of 2020. Um, did I say Jim Tomey? You did. You have already said Jim Tomey. Okay, I said Tomey. I said Ramirez. Um, I'm running out of names. Running out of names. Sammy Sosa, I don't think played in enough playoff games. Um. McGuire, Mays, Robinson, Aaron, Ott, Matthews, Marie, um, Paul Miro, Killebrew, uh, Edwin Encarnacion. Is that your guess? Yeah, that's my guess. I'm sorry, that is your third strike. Mm. Okay. The three that you were missing. Corey Seager. I not, whoa, 19. I not, didn't say Seager. I, I thought I said Seager. Corey Seager. Okay, my bad. Nope, you did not say Corey Seager. With. Uh, yeah, with 19. The next, Bryce Harper, 17. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And then the last is Jason Worth with 15. Okay. Worth, I would have taken a while to get that one. I should have gotten yeah. Harper. I thought I said, I did honestly think I said Seager. So I wasn't, he didn't cross my mind again. If. If you did, then I do apologize, but even then, you still... Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll just say for the sake of things and for the sake of... Oh, I, I don't fun, know if I actually said it, but mentally, I thought I said Seeger. So, fair oh, enough. Yeah, we got we got Seeger, we got... Cool. Okay. Yeah, my bad. So, so you were three away from getting the full list, which is still plenty impressive. Yeah, we're Although, three. to be fair, I still think one of the funniest parts of that was that you had the number four guy just sitting there forever in Kyle Schwerber. Mm -hmm. he was well, just you know, like, there. Bernie held the record. Like Schwarber mm -hmm. has never held the record. Bernie held the record, and um, Jackson and Ruth held the record. Mantle held the, held the record. And then Manny had the record. But mm -hmm. uh, the the guys that get lost in the middle there, 
that don't hold the record and don't set any records and don't aren't the even aren't even the active leader because that's Altuve. So that's mm-hmm. that's what throws a wrench into it. But GG's exactly. good trivia. Yeah. That was a good one. Yep. For for that one here. Again, let us know how well you did if you played along here with us. Were there any names that stumped you from on uh from if you were playing along with us on this? But it is now time for the moment to ourselves where we take a moment to talk about whatever's on our mind. It does not have to be baseball related, but it absolutely can be. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to go first today if that is all right with you. Sure. You're more than welcome cool. to. Sounds good. Can you count me down? Yep. Mine's going to be real short. I'm just letting you know okay. that right now. Three, two, one. So my moment to myself, I just want to remind people, make sure you fact check. It is more important to be accurate than it is to be fast. I understand that speed is what kills in a lot of reporting nowadays. Be accurate. Because otherwise, you sometimes you'll get the story wrong. And there's going to be a lot of people that are hurt from it. Yeah, people do like spreading misinformation. Yeah. Um, all right. Are you ready to go? Uh, sure. All right. Your time begins in three, two, one, go. Um, let's talk about the Heisman race for a moment. And I'm going to actually talk positively about both like the main to me, at least the main candidates and uh, Travis Hunter and Ashton Genty. Um, so in Genty's case, he is having the best running back season of all time, potentially. So 125 year history of college football, he might be having the best running back season. Okay, great. Travis Hunter is playing both ways at a level no one has seen in decades, like Iron Man football level stuff. Great. Um, as far as I'm aware, Travis Hunter is currently hurt. So I think that is a point in Genty's favor that he's actually healthy right now. Boise state is on a bye this week. So I don't know. Uh, this is a fascinating conversation to me because Genty's Broncos are going to be more nationally relevant in terms of like potentially making a playoff game. If they win out, they make the playoffs basically. So if they go 12 and one, they make the playoffs. Colorado is not as good. And at least with Boise state, they should be favored every game the rest of the season. Um, even against Oregon State, that's probably the best team they face, unless like uh, unless one of the teams in the Mountain West you take over Oregon State, that's fine. Um, Travis Hunter uh, plays both ways, positive in his direction. You have the media coverage with Colorado, positive in his direction, but it's not as good of a team to me. If you had Colorado play Boise State, I think Boise State would be favored, maybe by a touchdown potentially. Um, so that helps. And Genty is like the driving force on the team. Uh, There's the uh, college football imperialism map that through right now, there's like 20 teams in college football that have more yards, rushing yards, and Ashton Genty. He's just unbelievable. He's getting Ladaney and Tomlinson comps. And there are players you don't just that don't get comps, right? There are like the one of one unicorn level players. Uh, I've never seen an LT comp. When you had the Barclays of the world coming out and Trent Richardson's coming out and these great running back prospects coming out, they weren't comp to Ladaney and Tomlinson. You pick a different running back to compare them to, right? LT's a one of one guy. Ashton Genty is Ladaney and Tomlinson, according to top top guys. I do not have, um, I have not watched enough film to say he's Ladaney and Tomlinson without sounding like I'm an idiot. So Dane Brugler says he's Ladaney and Tomlinson, and I listen to Dane Brugler. Uh, Cause he watches a lot more film than I, or just about anyone on the planet does. So I don't know. I would pick Gen T, but I can understand a pick for Travis Hunter. And if Miami goes undefeated, Cam Ward makes sense to me too. I mean, I respect Cam Ward, former Coog. John Matier, I know is in the conversation. Are yeah. Cam Ward was a Coog for a couple of years. I, I don't even know if they're undefeated anymore though. Yeah, that's fair. But no, I mean, no, yeah. If you are getting comps to, to LT, <laughs> You're good. Yes. You are very, very good at and football. Remember, LT came out of the whack. Okay, Miami is undefeated. Yeah, they play. Cam Ward is. They beat. Really oh, they, they were on a bye. Mm. That makes sense then. Dylan Gabriel but, is in the Heisman yeah. conversation for the number two Ducks. That again, another insane game that took place recently on that yeah. one. A shout out but, to people uh, sliding. All right, late. You can argue it wasn't even late. All right, this isn't a college football podcast. I'm I'm done. I'm I'm out of. Yeah, we, pro- we probably we probably should. Yeah, 
You know, know what it is, though? It is time for us to end off for the, the day. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in. If you want to follow us on Twitter or Instagram, it's at LAR underscore baseball. We post a lot of really fun content here, mostly done by Splash. Splash does an amazing work with the social media channels. If you want to follow him directly, you can go follow him at Mrs. Splashman19. Or if you want to, you can go follow me on Twitter at TheSportsGuy242. But from all of us, here, losses above replacement. We want to thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your night. Stay safe, and I hope to see you all real soon.